Well, hi. Good to see you today. What we're going to be doing is taking uh, doing a series of videos on how to use the trailblazers, what different trailblazers do, and all the different varieties that you can do with them. Uh, so to be able to do that with a bit more fun, <clears throat> we're working with Mick. Mick, or more more well known as the Smoking Yankee, and uh, we're going to welcome him along. He's going to be working with us you know, for the next bunch of months. Uh, and we're just going to bring you some fun stuff to let you see what these machines can do and how you can do it and how easy it is. So remember our, our whole philosophy is to work less hours, have more fun and make more money. And what we want to do is demonstrate to you today uh, and in a series of videos coming through how you can actually do that, how you can bring your product to the market easier, faster, getting really fantastic feedback from customers and having a, a really good experience and actually earn really good money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to Mick I'm going to let him introduce himself. Now I'm going to say to you, Mick, I want you to introduce yourself. I don't want you to be humble about it. Right? I am humble. I think you, yeah, I know, I know, you're a humble man. <laughs> humble and proud of it. And uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do, Mick's going to just tell you why we've got him here to do this and, and what, he's, what he's done. Okay. Well, hello. My name's Mick and I am the pit master of Smoking Yankees Barbecue. We started a long, long time ago. We're probably the only barbecue competition team in Ireland. But we have cooked, or I have cooked, all over America. I've cooked in Europe. I've cooked all over Ireland and the UK. And my love is barbecue. It's low and slow, but it's also hot and fast. So it's a bit of both. But a couple of years ago, I got in touch with these guys. And we have worked together. And I have cooked on all their grills, uh, including the 600S, which is a... You'll hear me saying on other things, it's a beast of a barbecue. We have now worked where there's a smoker on one side and a grill on the other. What we essentially want to show over this whole thing is the versatility of this grill, the commercial impact this grill can make on your pocket. I can smoke and I can hot and fast, and that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to do it over the next couple of months as well, isn't that right? Absolutely. We're going to cook different things. We're going to cook this today because these are small cooks, but we are going to do the bigger cooks as well. So stay in touch, guys. Keep watching. Stay on Smoking Yankees at Belfast Barbecue and Trailblazer on on. Twitter and everything else, and just keep an eye on what we're doing because it's going to be good. It's Belfast, it's in, and that's it. And we want you to send us in a challenge. So, if you think there's something you'd like us to cook on the Streetmaster, which is the which is the higher end 600S with the smoker built in, send us your opinions and get, make suggestions. And every now and then, we might just take you up on it and, uh, and do a cook. So, over to you, Mike. We're going to Mick. Mick. Yeah. Uh, Mike. Mick. Uh, Mike and Mick. Uh, what are you going to do? What are we going to prepare? Well, today I'm going to do some pork belly burnt ends, which is here. We're going to season it up. We're going to do what we do. And uh, I use Oak Ridge Barbecue from Missouri in, in America. We're going to do some pork belly burnt ends, which is going to, it's going to take a wee while to cook and smoke and reduce down. And then we're going to mix it up with some honey and muscovado sugar and different things and some nice Irish proper salted butter. None of this, oil. I can't believe it's butter nonsense. So what we're else going to do, we're going to cook some chicken up. We're not doing competition chicken thighs today because that's just a pain in the ass, but we're doing normal, nice thighs that just are going to look awesome with a nice chicken glaze and our nice pork sauce. So then what we're going to do, we're going to smoke some cilantro, garlic, butter, corn, and then just for a bit of fun, because I'm hungry and everyone else is hungry, we're going to cook up these monster steaks. So we're going to do that and just stay in with us, guys. Have a bit of fun. I'm going to be on Twitter. We're going to be on Instagram. We're going to be on different things. So if you have, as Lester says, if you've got suggestions, if you want to see this monster out here that I'm going to show you, if you want to see it cooking seven or eight pork shoulders, let us know. Because I want to do it. I, I take barbecue as a challenge. No matter what you want, I can barbecue it. I'm telling you now. And we can barbecue it on this monster out here. So that's it, guys. Let's, start, let's get cooking. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to start prepping here. We're going to prep up some pork. Um, we're going to cut the pork into nice, manageable chunks because anything that's too small is going to dry out. So you want to keep it nice, about sort of a couple of inches square, and that makes it nice. It can take on the flavour and the smoke and everything else. But I'm just going to work away. I'm going to prep all this pork here, and um, we're just going to get that done over the next wee bit. What I haven't showed you folks is how much of that I've used, but I will show you how much of this I'll use because it's a secret. It's competition. I can't tell you. So... This is rub, and what rub does to any meat is it seasons it. 
it gets it sitting, it'll caramelize when it's cooking. You know, these rubs have a fair amount of brown, brown sugar in them. They have all different types of quality ingredients. But what I'll do is, you can see here that I've got some on here. So I'll give it a wee quick toss. Always remember, clean hand, dirty hands, folks. So one glove, never touch this hand with this and this because then you're going to get people sick and you're going to get you sick. So what we'll do is we'll just get this a wee turn, we'll get it moving. The rub, what the rub will do is the rub will give it a nice focus, it'll give it a nice taste, it brings the complement of the meat out. Now, a wee secret, and I'll tell you this while we're doing it, and most people don't do this, is a wee spray, just while you're doing it, of oil. And what that does is it helps the meat, uh, the rub bond to the meat. When you're doing ribs, you'll use mustard, you'll use different things like that, but just when you're doing this, you give it a good rub, give it a good toss, you can, I can tell because I've cooked it a million times before, but I can tell by color where it's going to sit and I know I need more Dominator. So Dominator is a sweet rub. So what it does is it brings out the sweetness of the pork, but it also adds a wee bit of heat on the end. So what we'll do is we'll give that a wee toss. We'll turn that and we'll let that sit for a bit. Let that flavor come. Let it just populate that meat. We'll do the same with the chicken but we'll do it with a different degree of rub and a different flavor. We're just gonna rub these up, let them sit for a bit. Let them take on the flavor of the rubs, let them take on the herbs and the spices and the sugars, because that's the three different things that all rubs need to have. And they'll start to sit and caramelize. You'll already see the pork starting to sort of draw the moisture out of the meat. And then what we'll do is we'll get them on, because there's three types of cooking. There is rubs, you get the rub on, you get the flavor, which enhances the meat. Then you put it in and you let it bathe and smoke, but it's not just any smoke, it has to match the wood. So with this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a bit of hickory to start off with, which is a good heavy smoke, but it goes with any meat. And then we'll get beech wood to finish off. And this, the, the way we can do it in this smoker is that we can have, we can measure exactly how much smoke that we want in any scenario. So I can have hickory starting and finishing with beech or anything else. You won't wanna use anything more than heavier than that for chicken and pork because they're just, you'll just make them too smoky then. And in the words of my ma, when she comes over and she goes, I like barbecue, but it's just too smoky. And then we'll don't eat it, ma. You know, so. So that's the next stage. We'll just let these sit and take some flavors on. Pull them skins up and we'll see them just so they'll let the skin nice and crispy. And we'll get them on the smoker. And that's us. Well, guys, we're now outside. The beautiful down countryside, isn't it wonderful? We've done all our prep inside, we've done our pork and our chicken, we've rubbed everything and it's just sitting getting juicily lovely. So what I want you to do is introduce you to the star of the show here. This is the star. This is the beast. This is the 600 Street Master. It is an awesome combination of grill and smoker. And I'm going to just show you the smoker part. We're going to concentrate mainly on this bad boy today, but we're going to show you the grill because just look at the size of this monster. This is 600 burgers per hour. This is any amount of steaks. And the best thing is, this thing actually raises up from your charcoal bed. So it comes up and up and up and up and up and you can control the heat. You can control how much charcoal you want. This is just a monster for cooking lots and lots and lots of food at once. So it's, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. Now, if we walk around, we've got obviously your gull wing doors. This here folds away, so you've got a fold up table. This is the, this is the, the mothership. For a barbecue person like me, this is the mothership. This allows you to lift this grill away from the heat. So in other grills, you're worrying about moving the charcoal. In this grill, you're not worried about moving the charcoal. You move the food. You don't move the charcoal, and that's the beautiful part of it. So obviously it's all mobile and everything else. So we come around, and you can just see how wonderful this is. These, grill, these gull wing doors are awesome, and the reason why is because if you're cooking so much food, you can actually have two people cooking. I can be cooking on this side, and my mate can be cooking on that side, and it's just wonderful. It is a wonderful piece of big boys toys, I think the boss called it. So it's a wonderful piece of machinery. Now today, what we're gonna concentrate on, nice shot. What we're gonna concentrate on is this bad boy. Now this is my, my I consider this my child, even though I didn't make it, but I did help design it. I did help design it. And it is a wonderful, 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 wonderful boy. This is our smoker. This you can grill on, you can do your burgers, you can do everything on. This you can do all your pork shoulders, your chicken. You can cook and smoke ribs. You can smoke whatever you want in it. Beautiful. 
insulated smoker. Now what you can do also is you can hold, so you can have food cooked here and you know you have this sitting at a certain temperature and it can be sitting in there for as long as you want. You've got two lovely vents at the bottom and you've got a lovely chimney vent at the top which allows your physics to come in and allows you control the temperature. Now what I will show you, which is an improvement from the last time I worked with this guy, is these beautiful things. Watch this. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, bring the video in quick. Bring the video in quick. And now you'll see how the physics of this stand alone or stand up insulated smoker will work. And it is such a beautiful piece of machinery. Your air intakes at the bottom. I'm going to explain, we'll, we'll get on to explain what the physics of the whole thing is after. But just such a beautiful boy. He's a beautiful boy. It's a smoker, it's a grill, it's mobile, it's big, it's beastly, and it'll more than likely make you a lot of money if you use it. Me, I'm interested in the physics of the smoking. I'm interested in the food, and I'm telling you because later we're going to cook some pork belly, we're going to cook some chicken, and um, I might come up with a couple of wee surprises as well. So stay in touch, folks. I'm just going to show you how we're going to light it. We're going to light it. What we've actually done here is we're going to uh, set our charcoal inside our minion maze. Now what this does, this will, this will control the burn of the fuel. So this is set up. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to put a small bit of charcoal in the edge here to get us started. Then it's going to burn just slowly through. I have my wood set because today's smoke is pork belly, it's chicken. It doesn't need an awful lot of smoke. So then about 25, maybe 40% of the way through the smoke, the smoke will finish and then all we'll need is heat. So let's get it lit up anyway. Let's get it started. And what we'll do is we'll get the charcoal in here. You can be rude and just dump it in if you want, but I'm being in front of a camera, so I'm being nice and polite. So the charcoal's all been lit up here. It's been sitting and burning. It's at a lovely, you can see that lovely gray ash on it. So you know it's perfectly burning. It's not any dirty smoke. It's just burning away. So what we'll do is once I get that put in, We'll move a wee bit of wood over. There we go. I will move that over just to help it. I'll move this out of the way so we don't burn the boss's garden twice. Now, like any smoker or like any barbecue, your heat is dependent on air flow, especially when you're using smoke because too much flow can create bad smoke, which creates not nice food. So you want a nice level of air coming through, especially with an insulated bad boy like this. You don't need too much air. So once we get this guy up the temp, We'll get the vents closed to where we want them. But at the moment, the way this works is, we are lucky because we have two vents. One will control the heat coming through this side, which will start the barbecue off. And then rather than actually have the heat going up that way, we've also got another vent, which will come through this side. So what this will do is, it'll continually get the air to the charcoal, because without the air, the charcoal will not burn. So what we do is, when we close it up, we'll let that sit, because look, the door will close. Whoops, it is it. The vents are still sitting there, so they're still there. That's what works through. So the air will come up through here. It'll help the charcoal burn, and the air will come out the top, and you can control it with this beautiful chimney, which I designed. No, I didn't design it, but I did recommend this wee thing to keep the wind down to the rain out. So this can you can actually use it to uh, guess well how much air you've got going through. So that's 50%. So easy. So easy. That's it open fully. That's 50%. That's it closed. So it's such an easy thing to use. So what we'll do to get it started is, we'll leave it completely open and we'll let the air come through. We'll leave the bottom ones open for about 10 minutes or so, just so we know it's burning away, just so we know we're in. And then what we'll do is we'll control the, the temperature by using the grill or the temperature or the thermometers. It is the weekend. We get many crap, it's the weekend. One of the really nice features of this vertical smoker is your water bath, which will sit on your deflector plates. You don't want too much direct heat, it'll come up, it'll burn your meat. So what you're talking is, you want this to be deflected, so this will heat up and heat will radiate up. What it will also do is it will heat the water bath here. The water will then create steam, so you'll have steam and smoke. And that's how you do really good barbecue, especially at a low and slow temperature. You like to have a bit of moisture, you like to have a good bit of smoke, and then what we do is, 
we'll let this come up to temperature. As you can see, it's already starting to heat up. The wood's already starting to burn. The charcoal's already starting to move across. We'll leave this wide open just to let everything come up to temp and then we'll get our meat in and control our vents. Okay, so we'll close this up and we'll let this bad boy come up to temp. Look at these beautiful doors. Look at them beautiful things there. Look, 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 look. Bam. Sexy. The meat has to go in now. Let's get the show on the road. What I'm going to do is, my beautiful smoker friend here is up to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect temperature for both pork belly and chicken. I'm going to cook it low and slow. Nice, moist uh, version of smoke coming off that hickory and that beech wood. So it's going to be lovely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this opened. And I'm going to get this meat loaded up. And I'm going to close it and let the meat go for a nice smoky bath. And just let it smoke away until I can get it up to the right temperature. The chicken will be glazed with my secret top secret KGB glaze and I'm not even showing the trailblazer people what's in it So because I've made it before you actually got here so they don't get it cheeky rascals the pork however I can tell you both are rubbed with nice oak ridge rub but the pork's going to get brought up to temp about 165 I'll then take it out and I'll mix it down with some uh, butter and brown sugar and some uh, honey we'll get it back in again we'll get it wrapped up with tin foil we'll get it back in we'll let it come up to temp then we'll get it off and we'll get some of my secret porky homemade pokey so porky sauce on it which gives it that lovely you know succulent moisture that, that just collapses in your mouth beautiful pork belly love it so what we'll do is now we'll just get this bad but i love these doors these are fantastic so we'll just get this in i don't want this open too much because as you all know when you're looking you're not cooking so let's get this chicken in we're going to get the chicken on the middle rows here because I mean, we're not even going to nearly fill this grill today we're only doing sort of a couple of dozen chicken thighs and some pork belly, so we're not going to nearly fill it. You know, if you're going to just talk about chicken thighs, you could probably get God knows how many hundred into this bad boy. So that's us loaded up. As you can see, we've got our pork belly, we've got our chicken thighs. We've got them sitting nice separated so the smoke can just give them a nice big quick bath around them. And then, you know, this is going to burn for a wee while. We started it here. It's now going to burn right round and it'll smoke for a good... I mean, that'll smoke now for a good lot of hours. And I'll get enough smoke. I don't want too, sm too much smoke on it. But, it's, but as you can see, look at the capacity of this monster. You know, I haven't even put these in tight. You know, that could be, there's one, two, three, four, five shelves we're not even using. Not even using. And I mean, these aren't packed tight. So to think of the amount of actual food that you can get in here, I'd be happy to say you could, you could even hang. You could be hanging ribs to smoke. You could be, you know, in terms of chicken, in terms of pork belly, you know, if you wanted to do even pork shoulders, you could maybe get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You'd easily get at least over a dozen pork shoulders in there. And that's a lot of product. You know, that's a lot of meat. That's enough for any festival or anything for a whole day. Especially if you're using it in conjunction with this bad boy over here, making burgers, putting the pulled pork on top of the burgers. That would be perfect. Absolutely perfect. You know, that that's a bucket load but listen if you're cooking if you're looking you're not cooking i want to get this closed and get this pork and chicken up the temp so it's time to now take a break it's a sunday afternoon time to chill out and listen to some country music <laughs> Woo! now everything's cooking i'm gonna go and look for something else to eat Woo -hoo! Woo! <laughs> we're back and we've got our pork is prepared it's up to temperature what we've done is we've taken it out we've taken it off the smoke we've got some nice real proper irish butter some muscovado sugar some honey and an hourby drop of apple juice with a secret ingredient in it but i'm not going to say what the secret ingredient is rascals then what we've done is i've worked up my top secret chicken glaze which i've glazed some of this chicken and i'm going to just glaze these top ones here but look at this isn't that, isn't that handy look at that just slides out for you so you can glaze away. As I say, I'm not doing competition standard. I'm just doing nice chicken. The chicken's up to temperature. The skin is nice and crispy, as you can see. And now we're just going to get this glaze to set. While the pork is sitting in the tin foil tray, it's becoming more tender and more sweet. It's sitting in that wee bath of honey and apple juice and sugar. And it's just going to melt in your mouth whenever you finish. So I'll just get a wee bit of glaze on these chicken. Nice Irish razor, as you can see the... The wind behind us now. I've also just for just for a bit of crack threw some corn in to get some smoke on it. And what I'll do is I'll let it smoke up a bit. 
I mean, look, there's your chicken there, look at that. Whoops, a daisy. There we go, and then we'll take that out. I could maybe glaze that again in another 15, 20 minutes, but I really want to keep the heat inside to get that corn. You can see how that's burning a lot nicely along the bottom. We're now at the last bit of our beech wood. There's no more wood in this now, so we're really going to be running off heat only. And you can see now we've been cooking now for what, four hours or so it's been lit. And uh, we haven't even used one side up yet, so. So there we go. All right, folks, come back at the magic shot at the end. You'll get this pork pity. You can't taste it though, unfortunately, but I will. <laughs> All right, guys, now this is the second part of today's action. We're actually going to show you how to use this bad boy here. I can hardly stand here. The heat's going to kill me. I'm moving it away. But what I do is, like every other business in the world, I've worked hard all day, now the boss is going to come in and try and take the glory. So Lester, come on, come on Lester, come on in. Come on in and take the glory. Well, I don't want I've to worked hard all day, but you come in now and I, take the glory. I don't want to take glory, I don't deserve, but nah. you know what? Well, look at these boys. They are, they're lovely, yeah, they're lovely, and they're done four different ways. So we'll talk to, come on in and we'll explain to you. Explain the, the different way we've done these. This is, this is Lester's per <laughs> week looking, whatever it is, marinade. This is my beautiful, look at the colour of that meat. No, this is Lester's marinade. This is my marinade. This is raw. So this is just salt, pepper, and a bit of oil. And this is Oak Ridge barbecue. So this is Santa Maria. So this is an American style steak rub. This is just gonna be plain. And then these are our two different, our, our marinades, just to see different tastes. You don't want all your steak tasting the same. Yeah, so it's gonna be fun now, just cooking these off and just tasting them and comparing them. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference there. Cause that one has a rub on it. It's starting to burn a wee bit. Yeah. That'd be the sugar. There'll be a lot of the, uh, cane sugar in that rub. Whereas these ones don't, these just have oil, so they're going to have a di completely different colour. That's why I wanted to turn that one. Well, I think now, might be just ready to turn. Happy with that. Yeah, that's just nice. This means this is not going to move until we take it off. So, folks, what we've done is we've got a nice char on our steaks, nice bit of butter on it. We're just developing the flavours now. But what we want to do is we want to get it cooked to temperature where we want it. But the heat is so immense at the bottom to get that char on. If we leave it there, it's just going to create char on top of char on top of char, which is going to taste overly burnt or overly smoky. So the beautiful thing with this is I can come to this side and I can use this and I can lift the meat up from. Now I only have to lift it a couple of inches, but that's going to take dramatically reduce the heat that's hitting that steak. It'll allow the steak to come up to temperature without burning it. So it's almost like cooking now, cooking indirect. Even though you're direct, you're indirect because you've moved it from the heat. I can start now using my thermoprobe or my temperature probe to actually start telling me where my steak's at and then remove it as and when I want it. If I want it going back down again, it'll go back down. But that's a great, it's just a fantastic part of the grill. It's one of my favorite things. Okay, so that was a fun day. Great day, great day. And, uh, we're now, we started off talking about introducing what we were going to do. We've now got the results. We've had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, so let's just... Let's just start off Mick, mm. to see what these steaks are. Now, be honest with me. Can you tell whose is whose? When I taste it, I'll tell you mine's it's the best. <laughs> I think that's mine and that's yours. We think, but we're not sure. We don't know. We don't know. So we've actually forgot the mark. But anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to slice a few bits. And we're all just going to take a taste. Look at that. It looks good. It does look good. Mm -hmm. That's definitely mine. Definitely mine. Okay, everybody, I think yeah, it it's time to suggest. So let's try, let's try one of these first. Everybody grab a piece of this. Have you look at that? I'm quite Beautiful. glad that you guys don't know who's is who's. So I yes. don't look at that. Like, <laughs> well, we're going to look. I can pick. Look. Let's just see what happens here, guys. Mmm. 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 So tasty. So tender. No. No. Mm-hmm. Let's try this one. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Well, again, look at Perfectly cooked. Yep. See this one? Perfect medium. Tender. I think that's mine. That one? Mm-hmm. No, that's because it's nicer. No, I'm good. Because <laughs> it has an unami. It has my marinade on it. I think that's mine. Oh. Uh, this is so, the one I think has oak ridge on it. You'll know if it's spicy. Yeah. So we're probably going to have to go back around these two and have an argument. That's without doubt the oak ridge one. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Now let's talk us through, Mick. Let's see what else we've got okay. here. Well, after these lovely steaks, what we do have here, we have some smoked hickory smoked chicken with a nice glaze, homemade glaze that I've made myself. We have some garlic and coriander butter smoked corn. So this has been smoked and then it's been put on the grill with some butter, garlic, coriander, and it's been seared so you can see the nice wee marks on them. Mm. You know, there that, that gives it that lovely flavour. So these are smoked chicken, they're going to be lovely. And this is the pork belly burnt end. So this is the pork that has been cooked down. It was smoked, rubbed in oak ridge, and then smoked. And then it's been sealed up and cooked with Muscovado brown sugar, with Irish butter, with honey, and with some lemon juice, or sorry, apple juice. Just t tiny, tiny, tiny wee taste of bourbon in it, but just tiny. So that's it. They've, they've all sort of sat now and they've rested. So it's time for you guys to try your barbecue that was cooked on your machine. So let's go, guys, then. You want to pull that off? Thank you. And let's oh. just let's rip these apart. Look at the, look at the moisture coming out. Look. Look at that. Let's look. Just have a go at this. Oh, I play my. Just give a good bite on this end of it. Here we go. Mm. Here we go. Look at the juice. <laughs> look at the juice. Juice is dripping out of it. Oh. That is delicious. Oh. No. No. And you can see that wee pink color. Mm. That's not raw chicken. That's smoke. That's smoke. Mm. So what did we use? What what, what 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 did we use here? What do you think's coming through there most? Hickory. Hickory. Mm. Mm. Without Hickory. a doubt. Smoked chicken. Mm. And for how many hours did we smoke this for in total? Mm. We smoked it for about two and a half hours. And then look at the water. Look. Mm -hmm. And then we glazed it. Let the glaze set. Then took it off and just let it rest. So all that moisture goes back into that meat. So moist and flavourful. That moisture is amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, folks, just we hope you're not bored, <laughs> but we're having a good time here. Mm. Mm. So, let's try. That's just how we quick go at the um, mm -hmm. corn and cob. Mm -hmm. To cleanse your palate. So, interesting, so what this has done is it's been. Smoked in the smoker and then finishes finished off on the high temperature grill. So let's just give this a wee taste to see. Bite it on the chard, but I'll have this wee bad boy here. Mm. Just a wee bit extra. Mm. That's what it really is, mm. not Just you can hear a wee, wee bit, bit of smokiness extra. and then the yeah. sweetness and the mm. and again perfect for a side that's done just yep. alongside everything else. No and there's no work done to it. No work, no big pressure. Smoke, put on the there. grill. You gotta be brush and just do it. Mm -hmm. So then on there our pork. I think you're gonna let, let you use your own forks, guys. Just I'm excited to try this one. Yeah, so you dive in first then. Yeah. Let's go guys. That's just really amazing. You'll get the taste, it'll be hopefully You'll get all, you'll get smoke, you'll get mm. sweetness, and you'll get a wee bit of burn too. There it goes. Oh. Good. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Don't go near it. <laughs> Leave it all for me. Mm. Yep. Really good, man. Really good. Good, it? Beautiful.